We're riding on the internet, cyberspace, set free. Hello, virtual reality. Interactive appetite, searching for a website, a window to the world, got to get online. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set, you're going surfing on the internet. Hey there, it's us again. This is my brother Peter, mom and dad, and I'm Dasha. Today, we're going to be showing our friends, Andrew and Lisa, the basics of the internet, and we thought you might want to come along. It'll be cool. Now, here's a little background. When we installed Internet Access on our computer, I got the whole family involved. It's true. Everybody had their own tasks to do. It was a lot of work, but it was really worth it. Now that I've gotten on the Internet, I'd rather be on my computer than doing just about anything. It's really cool. The Internet gave us a whole world of exciting new possibilities. So I guess this is a story of how it changed our lives. Maybe it will yours, too, with the Kid's Guide to the Internet. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet. As Rich told you, we installed the internet on our computer just a short time ago. And I haven't been able to get the kids off it ever since. Not only do they play the typical computer games that all the kids enjoy, but their curiosity for learning has skyrocketed. Peter is constantly quoting sports statistics, and he can tell you the best surfing spots around the globe. <laughs> Not to mention the improvement in Peter's grades, and Dasha's too. Having the internet in our home has had a great impact on our lives. Rich keeps up with the stock market and our investments, and I'm able to pay the bills in half the time it used to take me. And the kids are improving in their grades and communication skills. Which makes me happy, as I would sure like them to go to college someday. Don't worry, though. It's still cool. The program is by kids for kids, and it's not just for boys, either. You'll learn how the net can entertain you and take you to far-off locations and meet new people. And at the end of the tape, I'll be back to tell you how to safeguard your computer so that you can reduce your concerns about the kinds of websites your children can visit. You never can be too careful. And to help out if requested, though I doubt she'll be asked. <laughs> so let's get underway. Yeah. You're going surfing on the internet. Come on in. Hi, guys. Dad's just leaving, and Mom said we can have the computer all to ourselves. Hey, Andrew, what's up? <laughs> Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Jameson. My mom wanted me to ask you guys to call her. She wants you to tell her more about the Internet and why you like it. Yeah, and you've got to tell her that we really need it for homework. But don't tell her about the games and stuff. Even though we know that's what you really want it for. I'll tell you what, I'll call her. Now, you make sure Dasha and Peter show you how they've done some of their school reports and not all that cybernet stuff, okay? See you later, kids. I'll be Bye. home early. Bye. Bye. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet. Okay, guys, the first thing that you need to know is that the internet is amazing and it's changing every day. Once you've learned how to get online yourselves, you'll start seeing web pages everywhere. TV shows have them, schools, Disney World, even the White House. What's a web page? Something ducks walk on? Ha ha, very funny. No, it's the name of the different sites you can look up on the internet. Hold on, sis. Let's start at the beginning like Dad did with us. So Andrew and Lisa will be able to persuade their parents about the internet with some important facts. Good idea, Peter, but where do we start? Let's start with the basics first. There are three important services you can access on the internet. Surfing the World Wide Web. Surfing? That sounds pretty cool already. Andrew, don't interrupt. Go on, Peter. Then there are news groups to share information with people. And then there's email. Email? I heard that's really neat. My cousin has a pen pal in Sweden, and they write back and forth, and it transmits right away and doesn't cost anything. Yeah, you can even talk with people all over the world on chat lines. Don't they have chess games and stuff like that, too? Yup, they got more stuff than you can imagine. So, where should we start? Let's start with web pages. So, first you need to know that everything on the internet has an address. And all web addresses start with http colon double backslash. Then, to access the World Wide Web, you type in www. And the next thing you'll type will be specific, directing you to a particular website, like MTV. Or you can just surf the net using a search engine to help you locate information on any topic you can think of. For instance, I used the World Wide Web to search the archives of the Smithsonian Museum a few weeks ago. I also had to do a homework assignment about the Wright brothers for a history assignment. Can you show us what you found? Sure.
was that the first plane the Wright brothers flew? Yup, they called her the Kitty Hawk. So that means we can visit most any museum in the world without even leaving home? Not just museums, you can go anywhere on the net and access resources from around the corner or to the most remote regions of the world. Now that's amazing. So where else can we go? Want to write a letter to President Clinton? Would he answer us? I bet he would. Let's tell him how much we love the internet and that he should try to get more computers for our schools. But how do we even look up the White House? You type www.whitehouse.gov. It looks just like it does in our history books, only it seems more real, like we're there. Is this like sending email? It is sending email. Dear Mr. President, my name is Peter and my sister is Dasha. Our friends Lisa and Andrew came over today. Sincerely, Andrew, Lisa, Peter, and Dasha. Wow, that's really neat, but how can we get the internet on our computer at home? You're going surfing on the internet. Remember how Dad said we should start with the basics first? That's true. Well, to get started, you'll need to get connected to the internet. You do that through an internet service provider. An internet service provider? What's that? It's a service that connects you to the internet through special super high speed lines. Your parents or teachers can help you figure this out for you. The easiest way is to use an online service provider. They give you free disk to install, and it only takes a few minutes until you're online. And we can do it ourselves? Yeah. You'll be led through a series of screens for the installation of the software. They make it simple, and they even have a helpline if you get stuck. You'll need to type in your name, address, and credit card information. Be sure to ask your folks for permission to use it. But the one thing we learned is that if your computer is having other problems, make sure you get them fixed first. Otherwise, if you're having problems when you're installing your internet disk, you won't know where they're coming from. So we install the disk and we could go online immediately. Does your computer have a modem? I think so. My grandpa bought it for us. It has all the latest high tech stuff. It sounds like it should be pretty easy for you then. But you might get your folks to help just to make sure everything's working okay. Yeah, because I remember when Dad installed ours, he backed up all of our computer data so that if there was a problem, it wouldn't get lost. And then there was something about fragments or something? That's right. Dad had to defragment the disk, too. I'm not really sure what that is, so you better get an adult to help you with it. Guys, Andrew and Lisa's mom's going to be honking any minute. Better pack up your stuff. Thanks, Mrs. Jameson. Well, you're welcome, Andrew. So, did you learn anything important today? Are you kidding? I can't go another day without the internet. Peter showed me how to look up all the information I need on my school project about Egypt. Great. We looked up school stuff and MTV. Oh. It was really cool. Well, good. I'm glad you got some of the important stuff done before you went to the games and MTV, Dasha. We did, Mom. We looked all over Egypt, Cape Canaveral, dissecting virtual frogs. We've been very busy. <laughs> well, I'm sure your folks will get it for you soon enough. I know we just love it. The kids are on it all the time between their homework and games, and I use it for new recipes and gardening tips. And Mr. Jameson gets up-to-the-minute stock reports, and I could go on and on. But you better get going before your mom wonders what you're doing. <laughs> that was definitely cool. Thanks, dude. Bye. Absolutely. Bye. See you on the net. Call me the minute you get an email address. Okay. <laughs> and Andrew, we can play interactive games on the net together. Yes. Bye. Bye. You're going surfing on the internet. As a parent, I've never been happier than when my children ask their friends over for an internet computer party. I'd like to add a word about safety, though. You have to remember the internet is not a regulated environment, so the quality and accuracy of various informational offerings can differ quite a bit. There may even be a concern if your children should access some of them. So, go online with them on the net. Or, set your Microsoft Internet Explorer browser to only accept G-rated sites. 
Well, how did our kids do as cyber teachers? Oh, they were big stars, of course. Oh, but honey, did you know you could dissect a virtual frog on the internet? Ooh. <laughs> oh, did you get those Rolling Stone concert tickets? And the whole family can go, right? I mean, you can buy tickets online. I don't know. What do you think, kids? Yeah. Surf's up. See you on the net. On the mark, get set. We're riding on the internet. Cyberspace set free. Hello, virtual reality. Interactive appetite. Searching for a website. A window to the world. Got to get online. Take a spin. Now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet.